My name is Pierre Durand. I'm a researcher here in the Department of Molecular Medicine at WITS, and we study uh, life's complexity. We want to know why life emerged complexity at all. So at, at the very beginning of life, there were very simple molecules, and these emerged into more complex groups of molecules. And then the molecules formed very simple cells. These formed more complex cells. Eventually, those cells work together to form multicellular life, and, um, and we want to know how this happened. And RNA molecules were the first molecules which could have given rise to life. These RNA molecules are basically uh, strings of nucleotides which, could be, uh, which have the information for functions to evolve. These strings of nucleotides are heritable, that means they can be transferred to the next generation and the same sequence can fold into a structure by virtue of which a molecule can perform a function. And because this group of molecules was able to replicate themselves, this group of molecules uh, had some properties which resembled life. Essentially, it's difficult, for example, for single cells to work together to form multicellular life. It's, it's, it's not a simple um, process. Single-celled algae, they can swim up and down the water column, they can go towards the light, away from the light, and they've got their whole surface area to get nutrients. Whereas once they lived in groups, they can't swim in a, in a, a fashion that can move them up and down the water column. And also the cells inside the middle of the group um, don't get many nutrients. Predation or protection from predators was one of the major cause why unicellular organisms became multicellular. In the beginning, the life was comprised of unicellular predators and unicellular prey. So predators could engulf unicellular prey. Now unicellular prey can protect themselves by forming simple multicellular groups. They can do that by either coming together or cells when they divide, if they do not separate, the daughter cells do not separate, they can form a large group. Now such large groups can protect themselves from predators. So there are many steps um, from single-celled life to multicellular life. It wasn't just a, a simple transition. And we found that at the very beginning, some of the most important genes would have needed to regulate the cell number within the group. So, so once you could get genes which control cell division and cell cycling, you can then regulate the number of cells that live within the group, and they tend to live as a group and not as single-celled organisms. And that really was one of the very earliest steps to stabilize the group. So, so um, uh, what would happen is, is if you had a single cell and you had these predators and they were, they were around and you get the groups um, forming just to escape predation, once the predator goes, they will, they will separate again and form their um, single cells. But what made them stay together? There must have been changes within the genomes for this to occur. So we have found some of the genes um, that, um, that, that have allowed this to occur.